And we're live across Northwest Ohio here on WOSN. We welcome you to Larry Fruit Stadium in Harmon Field in Wauseon. Big way to kick off the NWOAL League play. A couple of heavyweights and two teams expected to do battle for the league title will meet tonight as the undefeated Tigers of Liberty Center have come to Wauseon to face the 2-1 and one Indians. Along with Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. Partner, we're set up here for a couple of pretty interesting weeks in the NWOAL. And it's always great to call football on a Friday night with the mayor of Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts, and partner, we've got ourselves one heck of a contest. Let's see if you've ever heard this before. Liberty Center and Wauseon in a big game, right? Last year, overtime thriller that we had. That was such a fantastic game. Tonight, we got a, a big matchup between contrasting styles. Aerial assault of Wauseon in the ground and pound game of Liberty Center's run game. It might not be that uh, big fanfare that we had in our season opener with Napoleon in defiance, but uh, a big number. In this series, the 100th meeting of Wauseon and Liberty Center, 48, 45, and 6. Liberty leads these all-time series, as Miles said. Tigers won in overtime a year ago, 34-28. They've dominated lately, winning three of four, although the two teams have each won five of the last ten. You see the Wauseon crowd, it's full. There's not a whole lot of empty seats left. Looking forward to what should be a good one tonight. Yeah, a huge crowd over at Liberty Center side as well. As you take a look there, and the Liberty Center fans, they're lined up you know, by 5 o'clock waiting to get in, shaking the gates because they wanted to get in and watch this football game. And before we get any further into our night tonight, we want to tell you that our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Wauseon is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. All right, Miles, let's talk a little bit about the Tigers of Liberty Center. As we said, 3-0 and on the year, two shutouts in the non-conference part of the year. Opened the year with a 31-0 win over Tenora. A week ago, the first road test went to a pretty good Otsego team. Won that one 9 nothing in the middle, one over uh, Napoleon, 35-21. Yeah, take a look at the starting lineup. Uh, you got to look at Matt Orr, the fullback, averaging 8.12 per carry. Zane Zyder, the senior signal caller. Boy, he was fantastic in the playoffs for them a year ago. This is a run-heavy team. Everything starts with the trap inside on the wing tee offense, then you build off of that. And why are they able to do that? Well, the big fellow's up front. Big fella indeed. Owen Box, he is a fantastic player. Number 62 at left tackle. He seems like he's been starting him since like 10 years ago, right? Owen started as a freshman. He is a big guy, 6'2", 6'3"-ish, about 260. Power cleans 290 pounds. And you think, oh, he's the only big guy? Nope. Right tackle, Landon Bachelman, another big fella as well. He power cleans 260. So run game supreme with Liberty Center. Hey, you talked about Matt Orr and his running numbers, 341 yards, five scores. Uh, Colton Cruz at halfback out of that kind of wing knee with some of the the, the offense, they do 217 yards. By the way, seven yards a carry for him as opposed to the eight for Orr and three touchdowns. And quarterback Zane Zider, 183 yards on the ground, manages the offense when they do throw it, completing 50% of his passes, 201 yards, a couple of touchdowns, a couple of interceptions. Now on the defensive side, take a look at the front three. They're going to have to get some pressure on Elijah McLeod, the gifted thrower for Wasian. If they don't get pressure, it's going to be a tough matchup in the back end with the secondary, Landon Cruz, Zacharias, and Chapa. They're going to have to really do a great job because we know the three-headed monster, the three amigos of Wauseon, they can go get the football. Let's talk a little bit about the Indians of Wauseon coming in at 2 and one Won their opener over Fairview 59-7, and then the next game a bit of a head-scratcher. Same Tenora team. That Liberty had shut out, came here to Harmon Field and uh, surprised the Indians a little bit. 27-14, Wauseon kind of shot themselves in the foot. Some turnovers and interceptions hurt them there. Wauseon bounced back with a 28-12 win over Napoli. Or, yeah. Yeah, what, Sean Moore, the head coach of Wasi, one thing he'd like to see is Elijah McLeod, his junior quarterback, limit the turnovers. Four interceptions are already this year. He does complete 58% of his passes, but turning the football over, not a good thing in this type of offense because you want that quick strike ability. And, boy, look at those receivers. Sam Smith Jr., was he about seven foot tall, six foot four, going to play at the University of Toledo. He can go get it. You got Tyson Rodriguez, Jude Armstrong, Three really good receivers, and then if you want to double one of them, there's Ethan Borton as well. Might be the best receiving core in Northwest Ohio. They'll have success if those five guys on the offensive line can protect the quarterback tonight. Yeah, we, when uh, we saw Washington a couple of times last year, it seemed like the Indians uh, ran the ball kind of enough to keep you honest. 
and it seems like, at least through the numbers we've gotten, this is the first time we've had a chance to see Wasi on, they've kind of abandoned that philosophy. you got McLeod, the leading rusher, with 48 yards. It's basically just throwing on every down now. Yeah, I'm pretty. they've only ran 78 times on the whole year. So, yeah, they're going to throw, and why not? It gives you the best chance. And really, buddy, their quick screen game is kind of like a run game for them, right? They get the ball out to those receivers on a quick throw at about a two, three-yard throw, let those guys run. So that's how they... Make the defense stay honest. And you talked about uh, Jude Armstrong, what he was able to do. Four touchdowns last week against Napoleon. Three offensively, one defensively, and that'll probably have to come up for him tonight. Yeah, Armstrong's one of those rare talents that he can catch a short pass and turn it into a long run for a touchdown. He can also climb vertical. Sam Smith, more of the guy that they want to go vertical because of his height and his speed. So they got all kinds of talent at the receiver position. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, defense for the Indians. Again, Sean Moore, the head coach in his fourth year, now 25-10, and 10, by the way. Failed to mention Liberty Center that win last week against Otsego. Casey Moeller feels like he hasn't been at Liberty that long. Already 50, his 50th career win. 50th career win. What a great thing. I hope he kept the football and someone painted it up for him because Football wins are tough to come by, and you get to 50, that's one you want to cherish. Do you have 50? Uh, I did not get 50. I got up to 38. So let's talk. Uh, now we'll talk about the defense. Enough about Miles. Let's talk about the game <laughs> at hand here. A couple of guys on the defensive line we're going to see for the Indians tonight. Chance Snow, Zayton Kessler. Snow, uh, two and a half sacks, 22 tackles. Kessler, three and a half sacks, 19 stops. Yeah, it's a defense that is led by Terry Lynn, the defensive coordinator, and they are predicated on getting in the backfield and causing havoc. They'll have to be careful doing that because sometimes you can shoot gaps, think you're going to make a play against a wing T offense, and all of a sudden those guys are already upfield. The one big guy that you want to watch, number 33, Logan Carroll, inside linebacker. He is a tackling machine. He's got already 26 tackles this year. It's a gifted linebacking core, Austin Cover with 24 tackles, and Xavier Martinez, 14 tackles. They are going to have to work really hard to stop that run game for Liberty Center tonight. Hey, got a couple defensive backs as well, guys. You talk about an offense, Tyson Rodriguez, three INTs, Jude Armstrong, two. Liberty might not throw the ball a ton, so what do these two guys have to do tonight? To They're going to have to come up and support the run. You can't stop. Liberty Center's run game with only seven in the box, right? You're going to really have to fill it up. Remember a, a year ago, they brought the safeties up and tried to stop that run. Uh, Jonas Tester was a guy that played really well in that secondary, played really at the line of scrimmage for Wasion, but Jonas has moved on, so the next guy is going to have to really step up from the secondary and make tackles. Well, we'll step aside here. We'll come back and uh, give you our State Bank checks of the game for Liberty Center and Wasion when we return to WOSN. Let's take a look at our State Bank checks of the game. Let's start with the visiting Tigers of Liberty Center. Yeah, Liberty Center first and foremost with their three keys. You really have to take a look at It's a trap! They love to start the inside run game with a the trap. They, they live off of that. 8.1.2 yards, 8 yards per carry for Mr. Orr. Run that trap until Wasion stops. And number two, box them up. Oh, and box the big fella, number 62. You are going to be able to run the football behind him. So box Wasion up by staying behind him. And number three, stay true. This is a team that when they stay in their base offense, the wing T, they really tough to stop. But sometimes you get a little... A little creative offensively. You want to throw the ball a little bit here, throw some new formations out. No, not tonight. Stay true to what you are. You're a wing T team. Grind them up, baby. And about some uh, state big checks of the game for the home standing Wasion Indians as they make their way onto the field. It's not go deep. It's go deep tonight. Throw that ball vertical. Let Sam Smith run under it. I think that is a matchup nightmare for Liberty Center. Number two, screen and go. Get the quick screen out. Get the quick screen out. Then go deep. Fake the screen and go deep. Go vertical with it. Fool that Liberty Center secondary as they jump up on it. And then number three, embrace the physicality. No way you can go into a game against Liberty Center and be a soft team. You're going to have to be physical tonight in order to get the win. I will step aside here real quick as the Wasion marching band is set to perform our national anthem. Thank you. 
job by the Wasian marching band. You see just over a minute to go before we get ready for what should be a good one. Miles and I will uh, stay in the NWOAL next Friday as we plan on uh, more live coverage. We're going to see the Liberty Center Tigers once again as uh, I believe a home Liberty game as they welcome in the Archibald Blue Streaks. Liberty Archibald picked preseason by the league's coaches to finish 1-2. Wasion was third. So we're going to learn a lot about uh, the NWOA out here in the first two weeks of the league slate. Oh, and you got to believe Archibald has had that game circled for a while after the, some will say, huge upset a year ago in the playoffs when Liberty Center kind of came back from uh, trouncing in the regular season and defeated Archibald. Archibald, they had the feeling that they were going to win a state title. You know, they just had that. Mm -hmm. They were rolling D.J. Newman at quarterback. They were so electric on offense. And then a weird thing happened on the way to a state title at Defiance High School in the playoffs. Liberty Center ran the football all over. Our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Wauseon has been the State Bank. Invest in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. So Wauseon won the toss and deferred so we'll see liberty center with the football first as wasian's kick unit on the field except i don't think anyone's thrown in a football which is a bit of a problem i do believe you have to have the football on the field to kick it i i do believe you are correct that's going to be tyson rodriguez number nine that's going to tee this thing up for wasian he has really improved. I watched him in pregame. He's got quite the leg on him. I think they feel comfortable with him trying a field goal attempt from about the 25-yard line and in. Both teams kicking game pretty strong. He's getting final instructions from one of the officials. It's Landon Cruz and Zane Zider, believe the deep men for the Tigers, standing at about their own five-yard line. Our heat waves kind of continued here into week four. I understand it's going to cool off once sunset will come just before 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's actually Riley Chapa back deep. Bit of a squibber. This one's going to be fielded one of the upmen at about the 22-yard line. Good return straight up the middle, out to the 45-yard line. Grady Miller brings As up that is Grady one. Miller, a sophomore. We'll take a look at the Charles River replay. At Grady Miller, almost speed bumps Tyson Rodriguez right there. Rodriguez has to go low to get him on the ground. Or also would have been at Katie Bartador, an easy score for Liberty Center. Great starting position for this run-heavy offense of Liberty Center. The Tigers are going to start at their own 46-yard line. Wing back to the left. They'll give to the first man through. It's going to be Colton Cruz, and Cruz is going to get out near midfield. If you're playing linebacker and you're in a forefront, you're going to have to fill right away. There's an open B gap. Just run a quick dive. Take advantage if the linebacker on that side is going to fill. Gain of four, so second and six from midfield. Just underway, Larry Fruth Stadium at Harmon Field in Wauseon. tell you this uh, miles and i went down under the field about an hour and a half before kick luscious and thick would be the two words to describe not only my hair but the grass <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were talking about your dating profile at first here's nothing more than a bootleg taking advantage of the urgency to stop the run of wasian zider how many times a year ago did he make big plays with his feet well early in his football game he used his feet as Wasian, well schooled, took away the fullback or trying to get to the flat. It's going to be a first down. Our first downs tonight brought to you by Swat and Welding. Swat and Welding Company providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swatandweld.com. So first down now to the Indian 42. Zider once again trying to find some running room. Not a whole lot to do there. Now Wasian jumped into a bear look. At Double eagle covered up to center and the two guards. Confused Liberty Center. Got in the backfield. How about the job of Jude Armstrong playing the corner yeah, position? Just waits for Zider to come back to him. Doesn't dive. Breaks down. Makes a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Tigers will take their time. 
Seen a couple of instant replays tonight. Charles River and Spencerville are instant replay sponsor of the Premier Pharmaceutical and Chemical Research Facility Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Second and ten. I'll give to the halfback Cruz in that one, which once again will be Colton Cruz as he'll fall forward inside the 40. Well, I think Wasian might have found something that they like here. Back-to-back plays, jumping in that double eagle bear look. Stops the run game. Great job coming up and stopping it. That's Zayden Kessler, number 34. Took on the lead block, spilled it back to his buddies. Huge third down. You got to wonder early in this game, Casey Moeller, you get close, fourth down, you go for it, right? It's got to be for uh, Was Young, where they want Liberty, third and six. By the way, that uh, first play run, our first call of the quarter, brought to you by KK Collision. Well, heavy formation to the boundary. So first pass attempt, third down, quick out, sliding down on the 30-yard line. It's going to be incomplete. As they looked for his favorite target, Riley Chapa. Uh, when they watch this tomorrow, they're going to kick themselves because they had Colton Chambers wide open on the post route. Nobody was around him, but see him right in the back of the corner. Sometimes as a quarterback, you already predetermined where you're going to throw it. That time incomplete, but it looks like Liberty Center going to go here on fourth down. Yeah, they're going to trust their defense in their pregame. They've uh, pitched two shutouts in three games in the non-conference slate. A couple of uh, turned out to be pretty good teams, Tenora and Odsigo. Zyder rolling out, fourth and six. Looks to throw, has a man open. And it's going to be Chapel once again. He's going to come back to the football, and it's going to be a swat welding first down to the 30-yard line. Now look at Cruz, seal the edge for his quarterback. Zyder gets outside, right over top to stretch out. Hands. What a catch by Chapa. Whoa, big time catch, big time throw to keep Liberty Center on the move. Good look on the 18-yard pass completion on the Charles River instant replays. The Tigers move to the Indian 30-yard line. Excuse me, eight yards on it, not 18. Only seventh catch on the air for Chapa. He's going to go over to the sideline and say, hey, give it to me more. The ball's loose. And Cruz able to clean it up and hold on to the possession there. Yeah, very fortunate. Remember, you were in shotgun the last two plays, right? And all of a sudden, Zyder goes underneath the center. Sometimes that exchange is always errant. I always, as a former center, I always blame the quarterback. Coach, I, I put the ball in the spot. The quarterback's supposed to get it if I'm the center. Looks like about a loss of three. So second and 13 coming up here for the Tigers. Our opening possession of the night. I see a single receiver flank to the near side. Or is going to be the fake is. They'll keep it himself with a quarterback. Nothing but running room. He's going to hurdle over a couple of defenders, and it's going to be another swat welding first down as Zane Zider barrels his way near the goal line. Now the physicality of the quarterback, right? Fake the jet sweep to Orr, and you're going to run inside trap. They love to run trap with the fullback. This is just a different way to get it done. Zider, the big physical quarterback, getting it done with his feet, but I think there's going to be a call that's going to negate it. Yeah, at least a part of it. The flag was down at about the 12-yard line. So it is going to be a 10-yard walk-off from the spot. So it does come back outside the 20 here as we take a look as Miles has brought drawings. Yeah, how about that, huh? The left guard is going to pull. You're going to down block with the center back block, and the, the uh, right guard is going to go up to backer, and the left guard is going to get a free kick, free hit on the tackle who thinks he's coming free. That's the inside trap, something that Liberty Center installs day one. So it's going to be second. We'll call it about three, maybe four. Zyder looks to throw once again. Has a man open. As he'll swing it out to Cruz, who's able to get out of bounds for another Swanton Welding first down. You know, Zyder making waves with his arm and his feet. This time, easy throw and catch to the outside. you got to respect the run game. Picking on the flag, get Cruz wide open. It makes it at least a workable station now for the Liberty Center as they get behind the chains. So another first down, pick up a six on the pass plates, first and ten from the 17-yard line. As Liberty's already taken up about three and a half minutes, his first drive of the night. Handoff, they'll stretch it. Here's Matt Orr, leading rusher for the Tigers. He's going to be tripped up after a short gain. Yeah, Tyson Rodriguez, he might be a corner, but he is a physical dude. You saw him kick it earlier and then make the tackle on the touchdown-saving return tackle on the kickoff. 
How about that time he takes on two lead blockers, nice underneath him, takes out the legs of the runner. you got to have that if you're going to play solid defense against a run-heavy team like Liberty Center. This just goes to Orr. He didn't get a lot but fell forward, so he's going to pick up three yards just by going forward. Second and seven from the 14. Tigers back in a shotgun. Two receivers to the far side. As they're going to do a little misdirection, try to run up the middle after getting everyone to the outside of the field. Not a whole lot of running room there. They're trying to take advantage at Wasan would overplay the fact that Zyder was going to sprint out. They went twins to the right, really extended all the way out to the sideline. Wasan on man-to-man coverage. And how about the student section for Liberty Center? It's like country out. Yeah, I'm sure not a lot of kids said, I don't have anything to wear from Liberty Center for that night. Looking good, guys. So no gain on the play on the run by Chambers. Third and seven now. See a man coming in motion. More problems in the backfield. Wasey unable to read that one as they go to Orr. Just nowhere to go as Chance Snow comes up with a big stop. Yeah, Chance Snow used to wear number 51. He's 23 now. Makes a huge play in the backfield. That is already Chance Snow's sixth tackle for loss on the year. Give Orr a yard, so it's going to be fourth and six from the 13-yard line. As the offense will stay on the field one again. A little surprised they're not trying the field goal attempt here. They have a solid kick game, but, boy, if you can put seven on early, what a huge advantage that is. It's two receivers again to the far side. Zyder able to step up, has the man open, cutting across. Pass is going to be caught. Ball came out way late, but the pass is going to be complete. I believe that is Colton Chambers comes up with a big catch for the Tigers. This will be another huge fourth down pickup. Zyder put it right on the spot, but is there a flag on the field? I think there is. It's right at the sticks. Now they're going to come they're out gonna, measure. Yeah, they, the ball is marked on the near side, and the sticks obviously on the far side of the field, so this is going to be a long way to go, and instead of eyeballing it, they're going to bring the sticks all the way across. I'm, I'm going to say he has it by a quarter of the football. What this is going to be close. I, I am officially 0 for 3 on the year. Do, do, do. So you, saying, you think, I say he has it. What do you think? Then I have to say that he's short, don't I? I mean, <laughs> you can that's, agree with me. Yeah, I can, but I don't want to be wrong. All right. By a quarter of the football, he has it. I think I think he's got it as well. A great look. Great shot there with our crew. So, what's oh, By the football. By a whole length of the football. Hey, my first win of the year. How does it feel to be a winner? <laughs> Amazing. I need to get Ken to go back and edit the other ones. See, if you're me, you're, you feel like that all the time. You are a winner. The mayor of Northwest Ohio, always a popular fellow when we come to Northwest Ohio to do games. Signs all those high, glossy 8x10s before the games. Yeah, it's good to be the king. <laughs> Too soon? That is a huge, huge pickup. Already in this football game, that clock has dwindled down to 6.30 on the opening drive of the football game. It's another Swanton Welding first down. Now Zyder's going to be under center. Now they'll change up the formation, go the split backs. Send the tight end to the right. Trying to stretch this out with Colton Cruz fighting his way in. And it looks like he's going to be just shy of the goal line. I thought for a second he might have gotten in. This is going to be the buck sweep. Zyder barely gets the ball to Cruz. Off the inside, fake to Orr. Kick out block, getting it done inside. That's what you got to have if you're going to run a wing tee. You're going to have guys that will pull and get blocks on the perimeter. That was Tyler Lay that got the big block. Second and goal from the one. Wasian's going to bunch everyone in. Zyder's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be in for the KK collision touchdown. Smart decision. Let your big quarterback lean forward behind his offensive line. You're on the half-yard line. Don't chance it with anything else. The Z-Man, Zyder, get it done. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by KK Collision, your first call for automotive, body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. So Ian Rosebrock will come on to attempt the extra point. High snap, been able to get it down. The extra point is up, and the extra point is good. So 7-0 on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. 
Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. We'll take a timeout. 15-play touchdown drive for the Tigers gives them an early lead. So 15-play, 54-yard drive that takes six minutes and change gets the Tigers on the board on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard, 7-0. Liberty Center has come here and taken an early lead over Wasion. It'll be interesting to see on this kickoff if special teams coach Paul Amsitz likes to kick deep. you got Jude Armstrong, Sam Smith, and Tyson Rodriguez for Wasion. Now they're looking into the sun, which is going to be tough to feel, but those are three dynamic guys with the ball in their hand. Might be better served to put the ball on the ground or a little pooch kick if you're Liberty Center. So we will see as I look deep into my roster. Max Walker will do the kickoffs, do the kicking on the kickoff. So Ian Rosebrook, the kicker for the extra points, and then they turn it over to perhaps the uh, biggest leg on the roster. High end over end kick. Pointed towards the sideline, fielded at the 15-yard line. This is Rodriguez trying to get some running room. Flag's going to come in Rodriguez as this one's going to be down at back at about the 20-yard line. As Grady Miller looked like he had him initially, but Rodriguez made that shifty little move and got vertical after it. We'll see what the call is. Wasian acting like they know that's against them. So you have to believe probably a hold on the yeah, illegal a, block in the back. Yeah. The the block in the back going to cost them pretty good field position. And early in this football game, I would say the battle of physicality is definitely an advantage for Liberty Center. Wasian going to have to rise up, play a little more physical. So this will back the Indians up to their own 17. That's where they have it. Let's see, five and a half minutes to go in our opening quarter. Oh, they got a huge matchup on the inside slot. Armstrong against a linebacker if they want it. And they also have one-on-one -on -one with Sam Smith up high. Well, we're going to see the complete opposite of what we saw when Liberty Center had the football. Do have a back in the backfield. McLeod, nowhere to go. He's going to take off and run. And he's able to get out of one tackler, but not the second, as he's going to be brought down right at the 20-yard line. Now, you got to really credit McLeod for getting free. Pressure was on him in a hurry. I believe his own box was the first one there. And box and then Bachelman was in there as well. It's a gain of three on the scramble. Brings up second and seven from the 20-yard line as everyone looks to the sideline for Wasion for the play. McLeod will be exclusively out of the shotgun. He's got four receivers in the back with him. Back mainly just an extra blocker now trying to fire middle of the field. Pass is going to be intercepted at the 38-yard line as jumping the route is Landon Cruz. Yeah, Landon Cruz, he's playing the free safety. McLeod thinks he has the seam route wide open as the man coverage was beat, but never sees the safety at all. Cruz... Smart decision going up and grabbing it so it couldn't come down. Huge interception for Liberty Center. Fifth interception of the year thrown by McLeod. Again, we talked in a pregame partner. That's been kind of the bugaboo for this Wasion team. you got to believe McLeod thought he had zero coverage with no help in the middle of the field. Had the man initially beat, but the free safety did what you're supposed to, help out. Great interception by Cruz. The Tigers will start in the Indian side of the field to 37-yard line. Under five to go in our opening quarter. And now one of the officials coming over to the That uh, was the first side. coach. Uh, make sure your guys are behind the line. They went over and told Coach Moeller, guys got to get all the way behind the line. Make sure that they're not creeping cl close to the field. This team might be fired up for a reason. Zyder in his shotgun will now fake it. He'll keep it himself. He's got plenty of running room. Looking straight for the end zone, cuts in field, and he's going to go all the way in and score the 37-yard touchdown. Uh, he's been the best player on the field so far early in this game. They're going to run quarterback counter, and it's going to be Katie Barr the door. There is no red jersey anywhere in sight. Watch the kickout block right there and the seal block right there, and all of a sudden, Zyder, nothing but green in front of him. Running the football is what they do best at Liberty Center. And it helps when you have a quarterback to get it done as well. It is a quick KK collision touchdown. 
And Rosebrock on to attempt the extra point as he gets it up. And it is pushed to the right, so the extra point is no good. So 13 nothing on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. We'll take a timeout here from Harmon Field. El Miles, it took no time for Liberty Center to take advantage of the interception, getting great field position at the 37-yard line. Zane Zider zigzags his way in. He's got a second TD of the night as the Tigers have taken this early lead. Yeah, it was tremendous down blocks by Tyler Lay, the right guard, and the right tackle, Landon Balkelman, cleared it out so the counter could come back around. And Colton Chambers didn't really have anyone to block on the seal block, and the kickout block by Seth Navarre. Just took advantage of a Liberty or a Wasion defender flying up the field, and there was just nobody in a red jersey around Zider. And Zider just couldn't wait to get in the end zone, and this has been the worst start imaginable for Wasion. And a lot of shock and a lot of faces in disbelief. Saw that shot of the Wasion stands. There was a palpable buzz walking around when we got here at about 5 30. This place was electric. It is. When Wasion wins, there's no place like Harmon Field. Now they've moved Sam Smith over to the other spot. They go back to a high pooch again. And this one fielded at the 25-yard line. This one will be fielded by Logan Carroll. Logan and Carroll he's going to get out pick. across the 30 to about the 33, and that's where the Indians will start. Smart decision by Carroll. Not fair catching it because it was a high kick that he could feel and get some extra yardage. That's a veteran guy that's been on the kickoff return team. And, boy, you hate to say it, but it's early in this game. But Wasian, they really need to do something to this possession. Or it might get out of hand because it doesn't look like Liberty Center is going to be stopped too much tonight. Our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Wasian is the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, with skilled objective and caring financial planners. McLeod in the shotgun with a four-receiver set. He's got Carroll with him in the backfield. Looking to throw under pressure. Has a man cutting in front. This is going to be Armstrong. He's going to be taken out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. That's yeah, the under route. If you're getting pressure real quick on your quarterback, what do you do? Well, you throw it short. Get it out of his hands in a hurry. Smart read by McLeod. Gets it to Armstrong, who's always a mismatch on those under routes. Gets you some positive yardage. You're down 14 or 13, nothing rather. What do you got to do? Well, you got to put one play in front of the other, right? Something positive needs to happen. A completion for four yards is big at this moment of the game. It's going to be second and seven. You saw that shot of the Wasion sideline. Should mention, by the way, Wasion football team uh, given, granted, brand new helmets from the uh, Cleveland Browns. Yeah, pretty Part cool thing. All. 84 helmets, I, I was told, and finally something good out of Cleveland takes place. Second down, McLeod again quickly gets rid of the football. It's time they go to the far side out to Rodriguez, who will be just shy of the 40-yard line. Yeah, all right. Rodriguez, ninth catch of the year. This is the easy one. Quick screen outside, gets the block by Armstrong, gets vertical, makes it a workable third down. I like the play selection by Coach Moore. Get the ball quickly out of the hands of your quarterback because the first series, they are all over him. The game of four is going to bring up a third and three. As Wasion looks to the sideline. So for the uh, NWOAL fans watching us live tonight, understand Brian and Archibald scoreless after one quarter. It's not going to take long to see who the uh, top team in the league is going to be here. Quick throw once again, but that's going to be read by the Liberty defense. First up there, Tanner Klein, the senior linebacker, comes up with a big stop. Yeah, watch him fight to the outside through the block of Armstrong. Armstrong lets it go for some reason. It's going to be fourth down. I thought maybe for a second, Sean Moore, that coach of Washington would say, let's go. But they're going to punt the football, at least line up as if they're going to punt. Remember the quarterback, Elijah McLeod, also the young man that punts the football. So you've got to be really cognizant of a fake punt. And lost about a yard on the play, so we're going to call it fourth and roughly four from their own 38-yard line. Tanner Klein, what a play, right? One of those guys that they call a sniper in their defense. Low kick. This one's going to be raced up and fielded. Shy the 35-yard line as Riley Chapo will come up with it, and he'll pick up a handful of yards. Yeah, good move by Chapo. Makes the first guy miss. First thing you got to do, right? Catch the punt. Does that. He secures it. 
Off a, looks like a Randy uh, Roberts chip from about 50 yards away onto the green right there. One hop and in. Oh, it didn't go 30 yards <laughs> over. <laughs> but he secures it, and then he makes the first guy miss. All returners, that's the rule, right? Catch it, and then make the first guy miss. That was Wyatt Smith for Wasiana. Almost had him dead to rights. It's time to take over their own 37 or instant replays tonight. Brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. First down run out of the Tigers trying to find something. Colton Chambers as they stretch to the near side, and he's able to get out across the 40-yard line. Yeah, almost a great play made in the backfield for Wasiam by Zayden Kessler, but just misses it. That would have been a huge tackle for loss. That's one of the problems against a wing T team. Sometimes you think you have that gap that you can shoot, and before you know it, they're already on the perimeter before you can make the play. It's a gain of nearly five on the run. We'll call it second and five. Nose of the football just shy of the 42-yard line. This is Tiger White staying pretty white so far. An empty look for Liberty Center. As you say that, Matt Orr will go into the backfield. He's going to get the call here. He'll turn it upfield. Nothing but green grass. He's in the Indian territory. The 40, the 30, the 20, and he's going to be brought down from behind inside the 15-yard line. That's not very often that a guy that averages eight yards a carry can increase that average, but he's going to definitely do that. Already has a run of 70 yards this year. This is jet sweep outside. And there's nobody there because of the down seal blocks and then the kick out. He was having himself a heck of a day on the offensive line. 48 yards on the run as they're going to spot him just inside the 10 where it's first and goal. Another first down. Brought to you by Swanton Welding. Split backs in the backfield behind center. Get the handoff. This time they'll stretch it left side as falling forward is going to be Colton Cruz. And it looks like he's going to be inside the five-yard line. Isn't that something? You, you stop them and they get four yards and you feel good, right? That's a big play. We stopped him for four yards finally. You know, running behind there, you see number 62, Owen Box, leading the way. Navarre, number 70, getting it done for Liberty Center. And you can't say enough how impressive the offensive line has been for Liberty Center early in this game. You know, Junk, uh, Justin Duncan, number 52, able to get that stop for Wasion. Game of six on the run, second and goal from the four. Zyder getting everyone lined up. is under center once again. He's got split backs behind him. Handoff or working the right side. Bounces off one would-be tackler, and he's into the end zone for the third Tiger touchdown. Oh, how about the physicality of Matthew Orr? Speed bump, if you will. Hit on the th on the thigh pad, not going to matter. Let's see who it is. That's you know, one on one. Shades of Jerome Bettis against Brian Erlacher in 2005. The bus, Matt Orr, runs his way into the end zone. So it is a KK collision touchdown, the third of the opening quarter for Liberty Centers. Once again, Rosebrook on to attempt the extra point. Good looking kick that he will get enough of it, and the extra point is good. So on the Northwest State Community College scoreboard, all Tigers here, 20 to nothing so far. They've just dominated this first quarter against Wasion. Yeah, good shot of Matt Orr there, trying to get some go juice in him, get back on the field. It has been total domination because of the physicality of Liberty Center. Now, there is a ton of time left in this game, folks, and we know Wasion, and when they score, they score in a hurry. If you're Liberty Center, you got to keep the pressure on this Wasion team. And yeah, there might be some people maybe perusing scores on the app, seeing this one might be a bit surprised. What's the easiest way to see area scores? Well, I'm glad you asked, Miles. <laughs> Well, that wasn't, it might have been in my head. That's a good segue. But the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. So WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. Yeah, so tell you a little bit about what happens after games for us. We go somewhere to eat, and then I, Randy pulls it up on his phone, and he just reads them off to me. I'm like, what was that one again? We're always surprised by a couple. And it, they do such a great job down the line of gathering all the scores for that app. I've told Miles multiple times he can get the own app, but for uh, so I just turned forty this year. So you guys know what it's like. You're out with your grandpa, and grandpa doesn't know how to do anything. <laughs> That's what it's like talking to Miles. You know, grandpa, you can you can do this yourself. You don't you don't need me. Well, we don't get to spend that quality time together. 
Rodriguez trying to find a running lane is going to be brought down at about the 30-yard line. Well, I want you to get a contract doing audiobooks. Now I'll, I'll get all those downloaded as well. Well, big moment in this football game for Wasian. Are they going to be able to respond? Sam Smith, number 11, is yet to touch the football for this offense. Got to get him involved. Zane Zider, number 10, shadowing him everywhere he goes on the field. That's a great matchup, getting a little bit of help inside by Cruz, number 5. A little two-on-one action to take away Sam Smith. The Indians will start from their own 33. Once again, looking to the sideline. Everyone's got the uh, wristband. Get the play. So the days of the huddle and the uh, quarterback getting 20,000 steps a day are done. Runs straight up the middle and first down McLeod. He'll get to the 35. I like the idea. Spread the field. Make that Liberty Center defense spread out and then going to run quarterback lead. But it's Cruz, number five, comes in from his inside position on Smith. Gets in on the tackle. Gain of two is going to bring up second and eight here for the Indians as they might... uh, one of those mercy killings that are just kind of slowly letting that quarter leak out. They can get a stoppage here to kind of regroup after being uh, down three scores. Well, Wasi has got to get back to that quick screen game. That It's got to be successful. Liberty Center, last time they ran, it looks like Blitz coming was able to take it away. Quick pitch, a little bobble on the pitch as they stretch it out to the left side. Going to Ryan Friend, junior run, uh, running back, will get out across the 35. Yeah, I see Friend bobbles and he takes his eyes off the pitch. The pitch kind of forced his eyes to go away a little bit behind him. You want to, ideally want that in front of him so he can catch it and then get vertical. But good news for Wasian, this quarter is finally over. Yeah, that running play, the final play of the opening quarter, all Tigers after one here from Wasian. 20 to nothing our score after one quarter of action. All Tigers at an opening gut punch. The 15-play scoring drive. Wasian had the ball two plays before turning it over, and it took just one play for Zane Zider to score from 37 yards out. And it's been all Tigers since then. They added the uh, Matthew Orr short touchdown run. And that's where we stand here after one quarter. 20 to nothing. Now Matt the defensive coordinator for Liberty Center. He's established. We are going to take Sam Smith out of the football game, have a guy underneath, and then Zider playing over top. So it's really two on one on him. You're going to need someone else to make a play in the pass game. That'd be Armstrong or Rodriguez to make a play. Wasian taking just an extra minute here. They're actually announcing over the PA the newest class, the Wasian Athletic Hall of Fame class. Oh, Doug Roop was uh, one of them. As our uh, title sponsor for tonight's broadcast, Queen Liberty Center Wasion is the State Bank. Invest in the Northwest and West Central Ohio skilled objective and caring financial planners. Getting set for our first call of the quarter brought to you by KK Collision. They're your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. First call of the game is going to be a pass play for McLeod. Under pressure, looking to run, and he's going to fire this one downfield flat to come out as receiver is going to get open coming back to the football is going to be Ethan Borton but we'll see what the penalty flag is that's back inside the 35 yard line and it looks like this is going to come back on the Indians Uh, it's going to be a hold on the Indians because Owen Box was just power cleaning someone out of the way and all you can do is hold on for dear life and you don't want your quarterback to get hit so you can't really fault an offensive lineman for holding McLeod, good move, getting out of the pocket, using his feet. It's going to negate a great catch by Ethan Borton as he went down to get it. And things have gotten even worse for Wasian being down 20-0. He's going to back them up inside their own 25. Looks like the down box will stop at about the 23-yard line. Third and we'll just say a lot. Got to be cognizant of the tunnel screen that all spread teams like to run on third and long. So officially third and 20. Four receivers set out of the Indians once again. McLeod looking to throw, trying to step up under pressure once again. Will fire to the sideline, and the pass is going to be incomplete as he's going to lead Rodriguez just a step too much. Yeah, it's got to be concerning for Wasian. Liberty Center just rushed three, dropped eight, and they were still able to get pressure on the quarterback, McLeod. So we do have another flag as another, another holding call is going to be declined. 
smart decision. Go ahead and decline it. Make them punt the football. You are playing at a high level if you're Liberty Center. Casey Muller got to be feeling good about where his team is at. Absolute domination early in this football game. So fourth and 20. And Wasion will punt the football away here early second quarter. We did mention again at the quarter break, Wasion announced its new athletic hall of fame as soon as we get done with the punt here. This one is going to take an Indian bounce. That one somehow avoided Braylon Miller. And Miller will let this one go at about the 34. So that new Wasion Athletic Hall of Fame has another flag. This one shy in midfield. The second time already in this football game that they've had trouble on the snap to the quarterback slash punter, Elijah McLeod. Seth Seeker, the long snapper, bounced that one. And if you're Liberty Center, you, you filed that one away. Remember, they're struggling with that. You come after it later in the game, try to get yourself a block. Officials meeting here. The flag was thrown right where the officials are standing at the 49-yard how this is going to work. As I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of downfield block on Liberty. And now yeah. they're discussing how much of a chop it was. There is, oh, excuse me, this one's going to go on Wasion. I always like the officials when they're animated describing it to each other. You see him like he's pulling the jersey and giving them the business, describing it. So this is going to be, the walk-off is going to come at the end of the punt. So, so we'll move forward, and we will stop at the 44-yard line. Yeah, this would be a really good spot for Liberty Center. Run some kind of play action. Get that seven Indians route that they always love to hit. The Get themselves a big play line. after another good field position start for this offense. So we have settled on the 44 is where the Tigers will have it. Still 11 and a half minutes to go before halftime. Zider looking to throw, drops deep, trying to throw this one up over everyone off the hands. And incomplete, had a man open in Colton Chambers, a little pushing and shoving going on after the play as well. Uh, i tell you what, this is a tremendous throw by Zider. Tries to hit the seven route to Hammond Tree, but it's well covered by Wasian. Come back, look at that, just drops it right in. That is a tough throw to make. Colton Chambers unable to come up with it. Really the only mistake so far tonight for Liberty Center. Second and 10 now from their own 44. When you've had success they've had running the football, why not throw it on first down? Split backs behind Zider. Trouble as Wasian read that one. And knifing up in there, Zane Kessler, one of those young men we talked about, coming up with a big stop. Yeah, number 34, Zane Kessler. A couple times in his football game, he got into the backfield, couldn't make a play. This time beats the center with a swim move. Going to run inside trap. He's playing a gap. Take care of it before Lake could get the block. Lawson one's going to bring up third and eleven for the Tigers. Lawson trying to get a little momentum builder here with at least a stop. Of course, we said that a couple of times that opening drive, and Tigers elected to go for it on fourth down. Trips to the near side. Zider rolls this way, looking to throw. Has a man open, pass is going to be caught. Should be enough for a KK collision first down as his open man is Landon Cruz. Anytime they've needed a play today on a big down, the Z-Man, Zane Zider, gets it done. Another big throw, tight window. Huge first down. It looked like Wasan might, as you said, get some momentum with a stop. Third and ten, no big problem for Liberty Center. 15 yards enough for the Swanton Welding first down. Tigers now in Indian territory once again at the 45-yard line. That was a great throw. Logan Carroll was playing underneath for Wasian. Almost had himself an opportunity to intercept it. Zider now was going to fake to Orr. Wasian will read that play and it will go for no gain. Very fortunate the play was made by Wasian because there is a huge hole. Had he been able to get through that initial tackle, but Aiden Leininger makes the play. All right, take a look at this graphic right here. You guys always hear, I love to say A gap run, B gap run, C gap. Well, th these are the gaps between your center and guard, A gap, 
The great guard and right tackle, B gap, C gap will be outside, and D gap is way outside. So that's when you ever, you ever hear me say A and B gap, well, that's where the run is being taken care of. Second and ten for the Tigers. Now they're in a tight formation. Going back on the ground. This time they'll just spring Colton Cruz as a flag is going to come in at the end of this one. I believe it's going to be a face mask again. Ossian. Here's your buck sweep. Cruz going to be able to get vertical. Look at that, the pancake blocked by Navarre right there. Offensive line getting it done for Liberty Center. So ball right now is at the 32, and we're going to tack on some more with the face mask. So it'll be another swat and welding first down for the Tigers. If you would have told Casey Moeller before the game, Coach, you'll be driving with 927 left in the second quarter, and you'll be up 20 to nothing. Would he look at you like you're crazy? Well, I mean, he does anyways. (laughs) Absolutely unbelievable start to this football game for Liberty Center. First and 10 from the own 17. So again, Miles and I down here about 5.30 this afternoon before the game started. Coach Muller's already been on the field. What's he doing? Standing next to the concession stand with a slice of pizza. A little trouble on the exchange. Ziders just fall on top of this one. Must have been a pretty good slice of pizza. Said he had a, he had a couple pressing issues. One one player uh, forgot his pants. Yeah, it does happen. Yeah, you, he, that's why you always pack an extra kit. You always have at least one or two extra kit in your uh, travel bag, so a kid does forget it. If it's a kid that you're not relying on, you make a big deal of it. If it's a kid you're relying on, he's like, get the pants on. We'll talk about it tomorrow. So lost it two. On the bad snap, second and 12 from the 19. This time they'll go to Orr, beating and banging his way inside. It's going to take about five red jerseys, push him backwards at the 15. They run the belly to the strong side. You're going to see it right there. Another big kick out by Lay. It's amazing. The lineage of pulling guards from Liberty Center, able to get on people with the movement. Year after year after year, the names change, but the product, productivity of the guard play remains the same. So Nate coming up for the Tigers here at the Wasion 15-yard line. Might be something to try to get to two plays to pick up these eight yards. Split backs once again. Wing back to the right. Zyder trying to get him to jump, and it looks like Wasion is given Liberty five free yards. We see it every year, right? The hut, hut, hut gets him to jump. Looked like everybody thought it was going to be on one for Wasi on five free yards. You've got to believe now it's going to be four down territory, even if they get stopped here for Liberty Center. I think it was four down territory regardless. Now it's going to be third and about three with the nose of the football. See right there, right at the 10 yard line. Single receiver out to the far side. See a man going in motion, but it's all window dressing. Great cut block going straight up the middle and getting into the end zone and scoring will be Colton Cruz for the touchdown. Yeah, Colton Cruz just kind of cruises in. Makes a nice little cut with the right foot and then gets vertical. And a fake jet sweep and a kick out block right there. You see lay number 51 sealing it off inside. There is a lot of trouble for Wasian because all those white jerseys in front of Mr. Cruz cruising in for an easy win up 26, maybe 27 nothing. An eight play, 56 yard drive. Took four minutes and 13 seconds and now we'll have a penalty flag before the extra point. And Wasian's gonna line up offside. So now if you're Liberty, do you think about going for two to get the point back that you missed? Uh, as you say that, Coach Moeller sends his offense back on the field. Why not? You've dominated the line of scrimmage all night long. That's a touchdown play. The jet sweep fake got it open. The fake to Colton Chambers kind of held some of the Wasion defenders so they could run the sweep inside to score. And this is Colton Cruz into the end zone. Again, our touchdown sponsor tonight, KK Collision. Your first call for automotive body mechanical shop. Late and heavy duty towing. Two point conversion try coming up here for the Tigers. Zyder, the quick pitch, trying to stretch this out to the near sideline. And a good individual effort made on defense as Sam Smith 
is going to keep, I believe that was Trent Cruz, from getting the two-point conversion. A little bit surprised by the call that they tried to go outside. It had so much success running between the tackles. Went double tight end there. I thought they were going to run right at Wasion. But finally, we get to call Sam Smith's name as he comes up and denies a two-point conversion. It's two-point no good, but still all Tigers. 26 nothing. We'll step aside here in WOSF. Another pooch kick. This one will be fielded right at the 30-yard line as Wasion brings some of their hands team members on to get that one. This time Logan Carroll will get it. He'll pick up just shy of 10 yards, it looks like. It's a good field position for the Indians. As Brooks Benfelt got down there, number 21st. Made it a tough return for Wasion. Takes a lot of courage to be a guy that you're going to run as fast as you can for about 30, 40 yards and then launch your body into another human being. It's just not a natural thing. You imagine in the, in the old days, and we haven't seen them a lot lately, the wedge busters? Oh, right, right. That, so, that you used to get a bell rung easy on that one. First and 10, Wasion from their own 38. Can't get all 26 back at once, but they need a sustained drive. Long throw on that one. Waiting for the official call. Is it a flag, as someone might have said something running by an official. Still waiting for a call, and I believe they're going to call it an interception. Yeah, Zacharias, who's just kind of watching the quarterback, McLeod, running his zone responsibility, tries to get it over top. Hit Rodriguez, but the errant throw goes right into Zacharias' hands. And they're going to say the penalty is against Wasion. This is going to be declined. Oh, and a pass interference call. So the second interception thrown by the Indians will give the ball to the Tigers in Wasion territory once again. As head coach Sean Moore, you see in the bottom of your screen, wants a bit of an explanation on that one. Don't know if he's going to agree with it. No, if it's bad news, you never do agree with it, right? Especially when you're down 26 nothing. Nothing has gone right, and yet you're getting a call against you and an interception. And you see Coach Moore talking to Coach Thomas, getting clarification on it. Everything going the way for Liberty Center tonight. Tigers will start at the Wasion 43-yard line. Wingback will go in motion, will fake the handoff. Will hold going on in the backfield. It's going to go one call. Now flag. He does come in from uh, the opposite side. There's a little confusion on the field. Hammetry ended up with the reception. We'll have to see what the penalty is here. And originally it's supposed to go out to the left-hand side, but the penetration is going to uh, negate any chance rolling to his left. Zider comes back to the right. And I believe that was Snow getting pressure. Causing the hold by Owen Box. Going to back this Liberty Center team up in really the worst starting position they've had all night long. First down in about 21. And they've been in this position a couple of times. He's able to, to pay off, but uh, first we'll just take all four downs to try to pick up 20 <laughs> yards. It's easy when you're running off tackle for 8 and 10 yards, isn't it? So the Tigers now backed up to their own 47 We'll call it first and 20 here as we near the halfway mark of the second quarter. Handoff goes back Trenton Cruz. Trying to stretch this out. He'll get back inside Wasion territory. And that's Chance Snow again making the play on the perimeter. Chance Snow, he has come to play. See him over there. He's pacing. He's still angry. Second and 16. With the ball spotted inside the uh, Indian side of the field, the 49-yard line, right on the block W. Kind of staple here at Wasion for uh, just about ever. Shotgun look. It's going to be a keeper. Zider trying to find a little bit of running room. Is going to inch his way to the 45. And now you're going to have a third down call coming up here. The best played quarterback run of the night by Wasian. It's Borton that's going to come up from the secondary, make the tackle near the line of scrimmage. Third down and huge. Wasian needs something desperately to happen positive for them here. Third and 12 from the 45. As it's been most of the night with the free possession, got to think this would be uh, two plays to pick this up. Zyder in the shotgun, looks 
to throw, has a man open, and that one is going to be broken up and incomplete as Jude Armstrong comes up with a good play. Armstrong plays this pretty well. It's going to be a curl right at the stick. Choppa's going to be open, picking on the curl-flat combo. Linebacker vacates, hit the curl, but he comes over top with the right arm, chops it free, chops it away from Choppa, sets up a fourth down. Tigers do send their punt team onto the field. First time we've seen them is Armstrong. See what the call there. Make sure they get the right group on there. High snap. This one is going to be stepped into. Good end over end punt. This one will hit. Take good bounce. And heads out of bounds right near our WOSN banner. Put that up in a good spot, Barton. That looks good, doesn't it? We use some zip ties on that this week. It is holding strong on that fence. And it will be downed inside the 15-yard line. Smart move, kicking away from Armstrong, the only guy back to return it. He is a guy that you do not want the ball in his hands, so negate an opportunity for him. 26-0, everything is going your way. Don't help them out by making foolish decisions. Indians have started their own 14, 534 to play. You see there on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. Hey, look at Liberty Center, only five in the box, begging Wasion to run the football. And if you can't run against five in the box, you've got a rough night in front of you. That's exactly what they do. They go straight ahead with Ryan Friend, who will pick up a couple of yards at least. Actually, they're just saying no gain. He'll stay at the 14. The front three for Liberty Center just doing a great job of destroying the front five of Wasian, making life very difficult. Looking to throw here on second down towards the sideline. Jump ball and another interception. Oh, sorry, that was caught. My, my apologies. Yeah, it's the screen and go we talked about in pregame. Ran the screen, make them commit to it, hit the go part. It's a jump ball, 50-50. Borton's going to go up, keep fighting, and then all of a sudden, look what I found, Mom. Huge catch, biggest play of the day for Wasion. Took that off the shoulder pad of Cruz. Comes up with a big catch, 26 yards out to the 40-yard line. McLeod's got everyone set, looks to throw, middle of the field, can't find anyone. Gets out of one tackler, but can't get out of the second. He's going to be brought down after about a yard as uh, Xander Zider, number 50 for the Tigers, one of the players in there. Yeah, Landon Bachelman uses his left Just using his left arm. Hits the thigh pad of McLeod. McLeod walking a little gingerly back to the line of scrimmage after that play. We'll get a yard of McLeod, so second and nine. From the 41 yard line. Indians do have pretty good backup. Trey Parsons, by the way, came in and uh, when McLeod struggled against Tenora, went 11 to 12 for 117 yards. McLeod looking to throw, middle of the field, has a man once again, knowing a big hit was coming. That is Rodriguez, who's able to haul that in for a Swanton Welding first down. There's a little hole between the linebackers and the safety. This is a really good throw by McLeod. Drops it over top the stretch out arm of Cruz in that vacated zone, but Cruz makes him pay. Rodriguez, huge catch knowing he's going to get hit. He'll take 17 on the reception. They'll get into uh, Tiger territory to the 42-yard line. A good shot of Rodriguez looking at his wristband. They get to the line of scrims, and Coach Sean Moore signals into play. They look at the wristband, and they're good to go. So this offense gets clicking there. Found a rhythm here. McLeod looking to throw. Steps up. Bounces out. He's going to take off. Flag coming down. Has a man open well downfield. Pass is going to be caught. Stepping out of bounds is Ethan Borton. we got to see what the flag is back at the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be a hold that occurs right there at the top of the screen. Working on Owen Box. He gets out of the pocket. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be against Wasian. I believe it's already the... Fourth holding penalty against this Wasian team. 
is the call, so they'll be backed up from the spot, which looks to be about the 44-yard line. If I'm a defensive lineman and I'm getting held, I, on Saturday when we're watching film, I am lobbying for a sack on my total, right? Because it's the same thing, right? 15-yard loss. Coach, it's not my fault. I'm good that they won't even let me get to the quarterback by holding me. Oh, and Bach should lobby tomorrow. Bring in some donuts with the coaches. <laughs> Indians backed up to their own 46. Clock stopped here, 3.23 to go on our Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Three receivers set, or sorry, four receivers set this time. Almost a false start. McLeod trying to step up under pressure, fires this one well downfield, and that one's going to be knocked away incomplete. A lot of hand fighting going on a deep downfield. As Jeff Zacharias once again in a big battle. I know Coach Moeller was concerned about how his secondary would hold up, but Zacharias, he has showed up to play today. Great job using the sideline as your buddy, squeezing Armstrong towards it and then high pointing the ball. That's fantastic work by Zacharias. Yeah, nearly had his second interception of the night there. It's going to bring up a second and 21 back in the 46-yard line. If you're Elijah McLeod, though, why not give your big receiver like Armstrong an opportunity on a 50-50 ball? McLeod trying to step up. Short arms this one. It's going to be caught. Sam Smith with it. Smith able to make a couple moves. He's going to get inside the 30-yard line. First one, welding first down. Matt Bryan dials up a pressure. They bring five for the first time tonight. Almost get to McLeod, but you leave Smith one-on-one -on -one with Orr. Had Smith playing the inside slot to free him up. And this strong fella, you see why they love him. You see why he's going to be playing on Saturdays. Catches and runs through a couple tackles. Sam Smith, for the first time on offense, making a big play. Yeah, big 31-yard reception. It's a first down from the Liberty Center 27. The clock continuing to run under three minutes ago. Northwest State Community College scoreboard. Cloud in the shotgun, looks to throw once again, trying to step up. He's going to run through one would-be tackler, and it's going to take another one as a head. Helmet's going to pop off of someone. I believe that is that Waylon Rents, the linebacker with a big stick there. Now he'll have to leave the field for at least one play because your helmet popped off. That means you're playing hard, hitting people hard. McLeod elects to take off with the football, gains about four yards. But you always wonder when a quarterback starts looking at the pressure instead of upfield, that is a bad sign for your offense. McLeod kind of talking himself into pressure there. He had some time for the first time tonight to really throw the football from the pocket. He's got Ryan Friend in the backfield with him, his shotgun. Now rolls out, and there's one tipped and then caught down the far sideline as his favorite target tonight has been Ethan Borton, the six-foot senior receiver. You're having trouble protecting your quarterback in the pocket? Well, what do you do? You move the pocket, shrink the field, give him a high and a low read. Good read by McLeod, hits Borton again. Borton has risen to the occasion tonight when they needed big-time catches. Fourth receiver on this team, he is playing like a number one. 14 yards there, and it's first and goal on the uh, Swanton Welding first down. First down, and not a lot to do there. It looked like it's going to be a big play by Wasion. You're going to see McLeod elect to keep it again. Tries to run through B-gap, but the big right hand of Owen Box. How strong is Owen Box when he tackles him by the jersey as McLeod is by him? The big paw pulls him down. Second and goal coming up here. Loss of two. Longest drive of the night for the Indians. Tenth play coming up here. McLeod rolls to his left. Looks, fires, and pass is going to be... Caught it. It's the official. Wasn't quite sure what to call there as that one was deflected off a set of hands. Take a look at this one. Can't believe this is a caught football. 
Moving the pocket again, tries to hit the little hitch route inside. I'm going to say Rodriguez came up with it. Fantastic work by Tyson Rodriguez and Coach Casey Moeller. He's on the sideline. Fit to be tied. He cannot believe they called that a catch. We've seen Casey Moeller do this down through the years where he will take a timeout and do nothing but talk to the officials. We're going to take a look at the Charles River replay once again. I'm going to say Rents almost gets underneath it. Rodriguez, I tell you what, he does a good job of pretending that he caught the football. I'm not sure what the... We yeah. see the official, wasn't sure, do I go the... Do I do the... No, do I stop the clock? How about Rodriguez saying we need to go, coach, because we don't want to get reviewed. I'm not sure what the uh, fall play is at Wasion High School, but Mr. Rodriguez he needs to be one of the lead actors in it. Great job of pretending that he caught the football. So in the uh, stat column, it's going to be a six-yard reception. Now our official is going to come over and have a word. So the Wasion coaches wanted to make sure that they were clear on <laughs> what the call was going to be. Yeah, Casey Moeller all the way over to the hash mark. Tell me he's not a competitive guy. Up 26 nothing. He knows how dangerous this Wasion offense is. He doesn't want him to get any momentum going into half. He's had his say with the timeout. And then some. And you know the officials know he's right because they haven't said, Coach, that's enough. They're letting him chew him. So third and goal coming here for the Indians. McLeod looking to flow, fire. Has a man open as Rodriguez will get the KK collision touchdown. Yeah, easy pitch and catch. Speed out right inside the goal line. He has inside leverage over top, so this is a freebie. That is an easy touchdown, and I'm sure he caught that one. I'm 100% certain Good Rodriguez ball. caught that one. It's KK Collision touchdown. KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical goal. shop, and light and heavy duty That's towing. Rodriguez. And now Rodriguez will get the pleasure of also kicking the extra point. That was Tanner Klein on the coverage, but... Tanner had to play inside leverage to support any kind of run. Quick out, can't stay up on giving up leverage and speed to Rodriguez. 11 plays, 86 yards is the scoring drive. As Rodriguez will try to give Wasion one more point. Low snap, it's going to be fielded, and no chance as the Tiger special teams unit come up with a big stop as number 58 saw Tanner Klein the first one in there to knock that one away. Well, bad snap kind of foretold the story. Klein, he could have almost grabbed it off the foot. Physicality again steps forward for Liberty Center. So the Indians get a touchdown but the extra point is blocked 26-6 and we'll take a break here on WOSN. 26-6 our score as uh, Wasian able to get on the scoreboard again, 11 play drive starting back at their own 14 yard line. Ends up with a six yard touchdown pass hauled in by Tyson Rodriguez to give the Indians a little bit of hope here, as you imagine, barring something special going on here in the uh, kick, the, the uh, kickoff. Yeah, don't do something silly like onside kick or anything here. Get out of the half because you get the football first in the second half, you have a little bit of momentum down 26-6, getting your first score of the game. If you get a touchdown when you come out at halftime, well, and now it's a new football game. So Rodriguez will tee this one up. And this will kind of determine what Liberty does with the final 24 seconds of the half. So send a bit of a sidewinder looking for the sideline. Heads out of bounds, and that will change things now, Miles. If you're Liberty Center, do you elect them to kick it again or you take the ball in great field position? You have three timeouts, 24 seconds left. If I'm Casey Mola, though, I'm happy to get out of the half with a big lead, 20-point lead, just run the football, go in happy. So the officials talking to the Liberty side to see what they do, choose to do. And it looks like they'll take the ball at the 35. Maybe run a play if it springs, then we go from there. If not, we... Uh... I think if they run the football and they don't get a first down, Wasion won't call timeout. Liberty Center will be happy to go in at half. It's tight formation. Zyder in the shotgun. 
He will run with it here. And he will be knocked down at the 35, right at the line of scrimmage. Austin Kovar in on the stop. Yeah, watch number 10, Austin Kovar. He's going to play on the outside block. Keep that outside arm free. Makes the tackle on the perimeter. Also got some help by Zayden Kinsler, number 34, who's had himself a pretty good afternoon playing inside for Wasian. It looks like that's how the first half will end. Teams will make their way into locker rooms. Tigers got off to the big lead. Wasian able to get the late touchdown. 26-6, our score at the half. We'll have some halftime coverage for you. We continue after this. You're watching live high school football, WOSF. And our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Liberty Center and Wasian is the State Bank. Invested in North and West Central Ohio with skilled, objective, and caring financial planners. 26-6 are scored here at the half. Liberty Center with lead over Wasion with Miles Holiday. I'm Brady Roberts, partner. I don't know if that's what we expected to see that first half of action. Tigers kind of took control early on there. Wasion able to get that late touchdown, but uh, as the uh, it's not the sun setting, it's the moon out now. Yeah, Liberty Center, they were howling early though, weren't they? dominated this football game now don't sleep on Wasion just yet yeah, they get the football first scored right before half they go down and score another one right here momentum will be on the side of Wasion and all of a sudden it'd be a ball game at 26-12 or 26-14 and we know Wasion big play capability all that offense but they have to sure up things on the line of scrimmage because the line of scrimmage definitely won by Liberty Center in that first half so it is uh, the announcement uh, tonight earlier of the latest class for the Wasion Athletic Hall of Fame. So uh, Justine Johnson, class 2005, Doug Group, class of 1981, Dave Sauber, class of 1988, and Linnell Nofsinger. Uh, Linnell in as a uh, longtime softball coach. And Justine Johnson, known for her days on the uh, softball diamond, went on to Defiance College, where I believe she took D.C. to the uh, NCAA tournament. And uh, Doug Root, a multi-sport athlete, had sons that came through Wasion. I know Doug, summer league coach. Doug went on to a great institution where he pitched at the University of Toledo. Yeah, I see him. And it's weird. I mean, My- Miles says we're, we're going to pull the curtain back a little All bit. All right. Miles has to read the notes. Miles, honestly, how many of the notes did I have to read to do N- any of that? None. None at all. That's, that's why you are the mayor of Northwest Ohio. Yeah, it's I, I was, it's sad, and it tells you how long I've been doing this for. I see the list of the Hall of Famers. All right. I remember when he played. I remember she played. I remembered. It's well. It said that he hit 483. Doug Roop did uh, in 1981, and he also had four letters that he earned at the University of Toledo. And uh, you being a, a Toledo guy, yeah, they don't. They don't well, th- there's two O's, so there's only five letters you can get. So. Right. Oh, I, I didn't know if the University of Toledo used all 26 letters of the alphabet. Apparently not. Mainly the U and the letters. T, and then they throw some <laughs> of the other ones in. There's four that they throw out. Hey, how about the old timers that still call it T U? That's my favorite. My dad being one of them. <laughs> Tigers, bit of a squibber. Try a little uh, creativity here to begin the second half. Good return. On the short field for the Indians, they kind of saw this coming. Logan Carroll will get this one out near the 40-yard line. It's going to be good field position for the Indians as we start the second half. Now, if you're just tuning in, you're wondering why Liberty Center, why would they take the opening kick off the second half and squib it on the ground? Well, it's because of dynamic return guys for Wasian. Those guys are electric with the ball in their hand. Let someone else return it. Carroll does a nice job getting them in a good field position. See if Wasion can build on that momentum that they had to end the first half. Indians will start from their own 40 to the four receiver set. This is the uh, main set we've seen a lot. Could be two each way, maybe three and one. There has usually been a back in the backfield. McLeod has been a blocker most of the night. This one thrown into center field. That one going to be incomplete. Nearest player to that one was a Landon Cruz for Liberty Center. Tried to hit Sam Smith on a little kind of a post arrow route. Going to run between the safeties, vacating. Cruz leaves the middle of the field. He had the middle field open. Or he is being bracketed inside by Cruz and high by Zider. Yeah, Sam Smith just what the one, the one big catch that first half. Second and ten, still at the forty. McLeod dropping back, rolls to the near side. Steps up, fires once again. This one's going to be intercepted. And he's going to be tripped up by his own man. I don't don't mean to laugh. 
and Cruz with the interception, and we can say tackled by teammate Tanner Klein. You see the pressure by Navarre almost gets to McLeod. McLeod, rule is don't throw late to the middle of the field. Why? Because there's all kinds of bodies in it. Really an ill-advised throw trying to make a play. Had a, a touchdown in his sights. But his buddy knocks him to the ground. Tanner Klein. Oh, woe is me. Do you give Klein a, a tackle on that one when you're doing film study tomorrow? A great starting position after another turnover by Wasion for Liberty Center. The incomplete pass on the first play of the quarter is our uh, first call of the quarter brought to you by K Collision. And it's going to lead to a Liberty Center first down after the interception. A Swanton and Welding first down, following what you'll see here, the Charles River replay. A little bit of everything coming at you. This is nothing more than a straight-up dive. And nobody steps forward to make a tackle. Is there a flag down? Because the officials are talking to Liberty Center for a long time, maybe trying to get guys to settle down. I'm sure there's a lot of conversation between the two teams. That's exactly what it was, trying to get guys to settle down, quit talking, just play. Or runs for 21, and it's a first down at the 26-yard line. Split backs. See the back to the left. It's time to go to the first man through his Cruz. Again, just simple, straight-ahead football out of Colton Cruz. Yeah, Landon Bachman. Watch him. Right tackle just drives and drives and drives, moving his feet. That's what hitting a sled will teach you. Bockelman just takes his man all the way up to the second level. That's impressive stuff. Instant replays brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Eight yards on the run, second and two from the 18. Going the bit of the end around and then cutting it upfield as they'll turn it over to Colton Chambers. And he will have himself another swat and welding first down. And Justin Duncan comes up with another tackle for Wasian, or also been a, another touchdown for Liberty Center. First and 10 from the 11 yard First down from the 11. It's a swat and welding first down. First down tonight brought to you by Swat and Welding. The Swat and Welding Company provided custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swatandweld.com. Man will go in motion, and a big hit there, staying on his feet. He'll go down as Liberty Center trying to fight forward, and or, or check that Cruz took a big hit there. A chance, no, number 23 there, playing his defensive end spot. Makes a tackle for Wasian. He has been an all-effort guy every time we have played, or had them, they've played for us. He has made another big tackle. Need to, some more work out of Chance Snow if they're going to get back in this game. Second and eight from the nine-yard line. So the Tigers can get a first down at the one. They'll go straight ahead with Orr this time, fighting to about the five where he's going to be tripped up. It's just a different way to run your inside trip. You're going to run the jet sweep, and the mesh point was so quick. Fake the jet, give it back on the inside trap. If you're a linebacker trying to cross key on the jet, you are gone before you can fill, good job by Liberty Center and a pl nice play design. Orr picks up four yards there to bring up third and four with the ball at the five-yard line. Zider's going to have a single receiver to the near side as he's under center. Gets the handoff to him. Zider kind of tripped over his own feet. Orr continuing to fight forward. Can get a first down at the one as it looks like he's going to be close to that. They're running belly to the strong side, that right-hand side. Official stopping the clock. It looks like a man might be down for Liberty Center. They do have an injured player down. So while they take a look at the injured player, we'll take a break here in WOSN. Two pieces of business to take care of here. That uh, Take a look. The injured player, it's going to be a tough one for Liberty Center, Matthew Orr. Good news is, as you see there, he's able to get up. And uh, once he recovers, able to walk off. Now they're going to take a look at the measurement here. As we can maybe get one of the officials move out of the way. That one's going to be just shy. Of the no doubt about it, right? Quarterback sneak with Zyder. Pick it up. Now hopefully Matt Orr gets back in this football game. Looked like he's going to be okay. You wonder if he just got stretched out a little bit. 
He's moving pretty well, walking on the sideline. Worst thing about that is now you have to explain it to every single person on the sideline, right? When your teammates go, he okay? Fourth and goal coming up for the Tigers. Can get a first down here. As they'll give to the fullback, they'll do a little bit better than that. As the first man through is going to be Colton Cruz, and he will get the KK Collision touchdown. Well, it's Cruz following Cruz. You're going to see a great block by Trenton Cruz. Down and out, a good kick out block to seal it. Number five, driving his man all the way through the end zone. That's Sam Smith that he drove back in the middle of the end zone to get the other Cruz. Another missile. And Colton Cruz, second touchdown to the night. Now Ian Rose brought gun to attempt the extra point. Good snap as the extra point is up. And the extra point is good. So the seven-play drive ends with a two-yard touchdown run. Now 32-6 on our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Northwest State, get a great education from a dedicated faculty preparing you for the next step in your journey. Visit northweststate.edu to get started. And it does look like Parsons will be entering this game as his warm-ups on the sideline have increased. And he's throwing a little more velocity. So you're going to see number three, Trey Parsons, a junior, 6'2", 165 pounds, coming into this football game to play quarterback. 33-6, bit of a surprise. Liberty Center with the lead over Wauseon. Liberty will be home against Archibald next Friday night. And that is where Miles and I and our WOSN crew, speaking of Archibald, beginning to pull away from Brian. By the way, that archibald Brian game also can be seen here in WOSN this weekend through our partners with the Golden Bear Sports Network. Now, what part of Northwest Ohio do you have to live to call it Archibald? Because it, sometimes it's Archibald, sometimes it's Archibald. So you being the mayor of Northwest Ohio, tell me where is it correct to say Archibald? Everywhere else but Archibald. Oh, okay, all right, all right. I like that's it. That's what everyone will tell you. This one teed up, and we'll get another squib kick. That one's going to head out of bounds. So the Indians will uh, take this one. They might just take this one where the ball goes out of bounds at. Not a lot to work on for Paul Amstutz's special teams over at the center, but one thing they're going to have to take a look at is when they tee up the kickoff, it kind of gives it away what they're going to do, right? They angled that one severely towards the sideline. If you're paying attention, you know it's going to be a little pooch to the sideline. Officials having a word on the far sideline. Hawassi on cheerleaders trying to get everyone fired up here. All right, Mr. Parsons, come on in and win it now for Wasion. Got to be excited for Trey Parsons getting an opportunity to show what he can after the really a rough night for Elijah McLeod. Parsons in here, this team again down 33-6. Still plenty of time, 8-21. You see there on the Northwest State Community College scoreboard in our third quarter. Parsons make sure he's got the right play. Extra moment being looked at here. And Wasian has moved Sam Smith, number 11, to the inside slot between Armstrong and Borton. Officials realize that they had marked the ball in the wrong yard line. So they're going to back everyone up to get it set at the 35. Saw a couple pink cowboy hats over there. Did you break yours out this week? I did not. Left it at home? I did. Parsons steps back. He's going to take off and run, and he's not going to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Under a little bit of pressure, is finally going to be finished off by big number 75. Looks like that is going to be Landon Bockelman. Yeah, Bockelman's going to make the play. As again, all night long, they have harassed anybody that's played quarterback for Wasion. See there in a Charles River replay. Now Waylon Renz, number 19, has the first shot at him. Turns it back to Bockelman. So loss of one will bring up second and 11. Parsons trying to step up, nearly slips, fires to the sideline. 
And the pass will be caught. And is able to find Borton for a short game. I believe that's the fifth catcher already in this football game for Borton. Having himself a pretty good night. Borton was a guy that was fourth on the team in catches with only four on a year, so is building on that total. Third and seven from the 38 yard line. Lossia, or Liberty Center showing blitz, bailing out late. Let's see what the linebackers do now. One of them will come in. Parsons is going to show off some arms, firing this one deep downfield. A lot of hand fighting going on with uh, Armstrong. That one's going to be incomplete. Tried to run the slot, fade. Rodriguez, pretty good job of initially on his route, but he slows down to take a look at the football. And that becomes one that is one-on-one, -on -one, that jump ball, just a little too much on it by Parsons, as I believe it was Chapa had pretty good coverage. Fourth down, the offense is going to stay on the field for the Indians. You know, why not? Down 33-6 in the third. Let's see if Parsons can make a play to extend this drive for Wasian. Looks like they're going to rush three, drop eight for Liberty Center. Four receivers set, rolls out, far side, fires, and that one off the hands of Sam Smith, incomplete. And the ball's going to go back over to the Tigers. Now you wonder if Cruz got a part of it. Number two, Colton Cruz was playing underneath. Pretty good throw by Parsons. One that if you're a receiver coach, you always say, if you get your hands on it, it should be caught. I know Derek Root, the uh, right receiver coach here at Wasian, he'd want Sam Smith to catch that one. I was just pointing out who his dad is. Oh, that's his dad. All right. So Doug Root, who had a big night getting in the Hall of Fame, evidently his son is the receiver coach here as well. Is there anything in Northwest Ohio related to high school sports that you do not know, my friend? No. The people's champion, Randy Roberts. I'm going to say that as, as graciously as I can, I guess. <laughs> well, first and ten for the Tigers. They'll take over to the Indian 38, following the loss of downs. Zyder's going to slip a little bit in the quick pitch, getting it out to Cruz. Indians will read that one for a loss. Yeah. Down in uh, gap scheme, going to bring the guard around, lay wasn't able to get a block because of the penetration by Wasian. Second 11 coming up here. Tigers will take all the time in the world they want. The big lead halfway through this third quarter. The one touchdown. We'll see the uh, running clock, which I don't think a lot of people expected to see here tonight. Wingback lines up to the left side. Zyder's going to roll it the other way. He's got one man. Pass is going to be caught. Trying to get open. Nice job in the open field to make a stop there by Borton. The pass hauled in. Able to seal it off to get Zyder outside right there. Doesn't hold. Anytime you want to get to the flat, Liberty Center has been able to pick on it all day long because of that five front, that double eagle look. Nobody in the flat defensively for Wasian. Yeah, Waylon Wren's able to come up with the reception. It's a gain of eight. Third and three now. Split backs to the single back. Zyder again just gives to the first man through, which is Colton Cruz. Cruz appears to be maybe just shy of the first down. Austin Cover for Wasian makes the tackle, setting up a fourth down. Fourth down one. You want to have something good moving forward the rest of this game for Wasian because you don't want this to be one of those moments that derails your whole season, right? McLeod could use this as a learning tool. Offensive line could strengthen their resolve, get a little bit tougher moving forward. But this is one of those losses that, if you're not careful, they could wipe your whole season out. A fourth and one from inside the 30. And a handoff will be enough for the K, or I'm sorry, the uh, Swanton Welding first down. And Waylon Rents, number 19, carries that one for another. First down for Liberty Center and fourth down. Boy, it seems like they have been perfect all night long. I want to thank Swan Welding for being our first down sponsor. Swan Welding Company providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swanwelding.com. So big fourth down pickup in the game of three 
Give the Tigers a fresh set of downs from the Indian 26. Zyder looks to throw. Going for the home run ball. And it looks like it's going to be caught for the touchdown. Well, we thought it was Wasiana was going to have to go deep. But no, sir. Liberty Center. Look at Zane Zyder showing off the arm. Runs by Jude Armstrong. Heck of a catch. You go up and catch it. Pull it out of the air. Yeah, Landon Cruz able to come up with that as the Liberty fans up and excited. That's a, definitely a dagger shot, right? Go for the kill up big. Run the vertical, something that Liberty Center doesn't do very often. But Zane Sider, we saw him last season at the end of the year. He was playing great football partner. And I remember telling you, I thought he might be one of the best players in the NWAL this year. Turns out he might be. Yeah, big touchdown pass there, and something to think about. Liberty Center kicked the extra point instead of going for two, so we're at 34. No, it's 35 for the running clock. Well, they're making the announcement on the PA right now. Let's see if we can get that passing tree put up on the screen. I'll show you the route that was just ran by Cruz. Our producer Ken Reeker, maybe they'll put the passing tree up. No, we got, oh, the, we got the running clock. clock. Okay, greater than the thirty-point differential, which we are at. For some reason, I always think it's thirty-five. I don't know why. That's my favorite graphic to do. That turns into a clock. He still has his legs. He's going to run fast. But he's turned into a clock. Always ten to three with him. So it only stops for timeouts. End of quarter. Scores and change of possession. Change of possession. Crazy guy running on the field from the stands. He'll keep running. It's the big, uh, big fan of clocks. I, I do like clocks. I, greatest clock ever, the one that Flavor Flav used to wear. <laughs> right? That's right, boy. Had the big gold chain with the giant clock. Not a lot of guys could pull that off, but he could. All right, so after Wasian gets the football, we'll see if we can get Ken Reeker to pull up that passing tree for you guys, and we can show you what exactly a nine route is. Speaking of nines, number nine for Wasian Rodriguez on the return out across the 40-yard line. Yeah, Liberty Center being consistent, trying to keep the ball up. Guys, hands, there it is. See that fade route number nine right there? That's exactly what Liberty Center hit. That's going deep. Hit the nine route. That's what they call the passing tree. Now everybody runs a variation of these routes right here, two being a slant, one being a quick out, a flat, curl, comeback, dig is a six. You want to go the other way, that's an out. The seven route is the corner. Nine is my favorite, the fade, which they just scored on. Post is an eight route, run towards the goal post. You can't go wrong on an eight route. Or you're going to end up way out of bounds if you're on that side. <laughs> Quarterback needs to throw it quicker. It's weird. It's never the receiver's fault. It's always the quarterback's fault. First down, Parsons under pressure, and he's going to go down back inside his 40-yard line. And we might have to give someone credit for a one-handed sack on the Charles River replay. Now look at Owen Box. Swim move over top inside. Uses that left arm to grab the ankle. Strong enough to take him to the ground. Now if they called holds his sacks, that would be his fourth of the night. Owen Box has been a man wrecking crew on that defensive line for Liberty Center. A loss of six is going to back the Indians up to their own 39. Second and 16, and a night that just has not been their night. Well, we'd wondered if this Liberty Center team had been for real. I would say yes, without a doubt. They've been impressive tonight. Parsons looking to throw. That one's going to be incomplete. That one might have been deflected. It looked like someone got a hand up on it. This one's going to come right into your living room here. Trying to hit the under route right there, and it's going to be knocked Hammond down tree. by Hammond Tree. Good defensive line teaching there. If you can't get to the quarterback, you see the top hand come off the ball, get your hand up in the air. And wave it like you just don't care. And then say block the pass. We're talking about two totally different things right now. Well, no, I'm the one that brought up F Flavor Flav, so you're okay now. Got to admire the Indian cheerleaders still trying to work that crowd down by 34. Third and 18 for their tribe. 
Parsons looking to throw. He's going to fire this one downfield. Nice catch. Made there Jude Armstrong. Able to ju jump the defender. And it looks like he will have a SWAT welding first down. Runs the motion. They're going to clear it out in the inside. And he's going to settle underneath the clear out. Armstrong, really good catch. Goes with the two hands. Turns the body. How about the body control of Jude Armstrong? And then a the little bit of fight to get the first down. This game might be over on the scoreboard, but Jude Armstrong says, I'm going to keep fighting. He gets 17 on that pass reception. Indians into Tiger territory at the Liberty 44. Parsons looking to throw again under pressure. Rolls, fires towards the sideline. And it looks like Smith Jr. is going to work that and come up with a completion. We saw Armstrong with great body control on the last reception. Sam Smith tiptoes the tightrope there, goes down and gets it. Two really good athletes on the outside for the Swasion team. Pick up eight there, second and two. As we roll in the Northwest State Community College scoreboard now, down under a minute to go, third quarter. Parsons under pressure, all sorts of trouble. He's going to fire this one in the grasp, incomplete. There you go. See some pressure being brought by Matt Bryan, the defensive corner. Brings Cruz on the outside. Parsons tries to avoid it. Hammond Tree almost gets the sack. Good alert play by Parsons to get rid of the football. So no grounding call. It'll stay third and two now. Wasiang going to try to run one more play before we get to the end of the quarter. Parsons looks. Go for the home run ball here. Downfield, the Rodriguez over his head incomplete. I like the creative separation at the end of that route by Rodriguez. Just a little bit of a left hand to get that separation. Officials don't see it. That's smart play. Fortunately, too far of a throw by Parsons. And that's how the third quarter will end. We'll have the fourth quarter coming up for you after this. Fourth down coming up here for Wasian, but partner... Not what we were expecting tonight. You see there, 40-6. to six. Liberty Center's dominated this one from the start. Trying to figure out just how good the Tigers are. We had an idea going through their three non-conference games. But boy, we know for sure after tonight. Well, after they beat Otsego, I thought for sure they were going to be a really strong team again. But the score was only 9-0, so I wondered what they could do offensively. I think they've answered that in a big way. This is a huge statement moving forward. For Liberty Center in the NWOAL. That's one of those scores that people are going to look at when they're on their WOSN apps. And what in the world? What happened there? Well, they'll be able to see the moving pictures that Ken Reekers provided. <laughs> Big fourth down for Wasian, trying to stay alive here. Fourth and two from the Tiger 36. Trying to run for it. And it looks like they're short. Tough to be a power football team in short yard situations. When you haven't been a power football team all night long, go two back set for the first time all night, run quarterback lead. This one's going to be way short as Liberty Center has owned the line of scrimmage all night long, especially on another big fourth down. Now Parsons needed two yards. It looks like he got one. And the Tigers will take over here. It's going to stop the clock momentarily, change of possession with 11 and a half minutes to go. We want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Liberty Center and Wauseon is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Looks like some fresh white pants are in the game now for Wauseon. And you wonder how long it'll be before Liberty Center gets uh, some bodies in the game as well. well first down. From the 35, see some of the number ones, some of the key positions. Oh, we did see warming up one of the Liberty Center players not in uniform tonight. Backup quarterback Landon Amstutz. Yeah, you wonder, Amstutz, uh, he had a brace on the knee. Hopefully it's going to be one of those situations where he's back quickly. I know he didn't play tonight, but I will say this. The young man, tremendous head of hair. I was jealous. Yes. And that tells you something. Some serious lettuce on that head. Makes his dad, Paul, extremely proud, I'm sure. A gain of four in the run is going to bring second and six. 
Looks like some fresh backs in the backfield with Zyder. Handoff is go straight up the middle. Liberty Center won't get too fancy here with a big lead. Looks like they've turned things over here. Is that Rents? Yeah, it's Rents again. If he gets a first down, you rents it, repeat again, right? I see what you did there. <laughs> Third and two coming up here from the 43. High formation, look. It's going to be a give to the tailback, it looks. It is. It's going to be Colton Cruz bouncing to the outside. He's going to have himself. Marty Swan welding first down. Marty Schottenheimer's favorite play. It's the old power O. You're going to get a lead block with the fullback, and the guard's going to pull around. Defense is going to collapse, and it's a B-gap run. Cruz has good vision, bounces at the D-gap for yet another Liberty Center first down in this ground game. Boy, is it punishing. And to the Indian 41. Tigers stay in that eye formation. Hand off to Cruz once again. Cut back upfield. They'll get a couple of yards. Cruz carries the ball. It's Austin Cover. He's had himself a pretty good second half for Wasion, number 10. Going to meet Cruz one on one right there. Stiff arm up to the face mask doesn't bother him at all. Cover still makes the tackle. A game of two is going to bring up second and eight. So Liberty Center has gotten up over 200 yards on the ground tonight. Unofficially 219. Second a, and eight. That was a long run by Zyder that I think broke this game open, really. Turn it over to Trenton Cruz, who's going to have another sweat welding first down as he rips off a long game. Yeah, it's one of those. On's early in the game, you get four on, and late in the game, you're going to pop it. There's another tremendous block on the inside by Ty Tyler Lay, number 51. He is a point guard extraordinaire. Got out in front of that one. First down from the 15. Zyder leaving the game, getting nice applause from the Liberty Center. Faithful over there, well-deserved. He's been dynamic tonight. Not, uh, is that a hint on what we're going to see <laughs> later in our postgame? Trouble in the snap with the new quarterback as Grady Miller, sophomore, will come in and take over as the signal caller. Yeah, bad exchange. And instead of falling out, he tries to continue to play. He better serve just draw, falling on the ball and maintaining possession. Looking like George Plimpton and Paper. A lion right there. That instant replay again brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. You like how I'm referencing early 70s movies? The three people that got that one. Thank you. Thank you. You're something. You know what Paper Lion is, right? George Plimpton wrote the book, spent training camp with the Detroit Lions one year. I know what paper is because yeah. I'm holding some. <laughs> I've seen the Detroit Lions. Yeah, it's a, it's a good book. It was before the Lions won all their Super Bowls. Boy. Sorry, Lion fans. I, I'm, I'm picking on you there. The Hard Knocks was really good, so count that as That's a Super Bowl win. Parsons looking to throw as Wasiano will take over the football after the fumble. Incomplete pass trying to find Borton. Parsons pass intended for Borton. Is incomplete? Should've, Borton hitting himself in the chest, telling his quarterback Parsons, I should have came up with that. Throw behind him. Get it on that front shoulder. Hit it on the one instead of the five. Easy catch. So, uh, Borton, top receiver tonight. Three catches, 44 yards. Indians stay in the shotgun. Parsons looking to throw, has time, fires middle of the field. That one's going to go through the hands as Rodriguez unable to haul that one in. I'm trying to hit the under the Rodriguez linebackers drop too high. You hit the vacated area. 
very fortunate. Usually a tip ball, a high pass. It goes off the hands of the receivers, intercepted. You want to throw those under routes. You want to throw them at the numbers, not the eyes. Go off the hands. It's a high tip, usually intercepted. Third and 10 coming up here. Liberty Center student section still trying to figure out how they're going to celebrate after this one. Parsons back again, looks to fire, has a man open, downfield, that one's going to be hauled in. Rodriguez with one man to beat, he's going to be tripped up at about the 30-yard line. As Brooks Benfeld makes the touchdown saving tackle for Liberty Center. But how about Parsons showing off the arm, great pocket. He can step up and sling it. Rodriguez got him beat by a couple steps. He's going to go into the end zone, but no ankle tackle. But Benfeld to save the touchdown. It's still Swant Welding first down. The Indians get to the Liberty Center 30. Now it makes you wonder, Wasion moving forward. Do you, do you give Mr. Parsons an opportunity to keep playing? Or do you go back to Elijah McLeod? Or do you play them both? That might be the thing now. We're going to get a flag. It looks like a delayed game. So Wasion can hurt themselves there. The back them up ever so slightly. Everyone's going to try to get onside now as it looked like Rodriguez had it back up. Parsons looking to throw under pressure. Rolls to the far sideline. He'll fire this one incomplete as that one's going to go over the head of everyone. It's going to bring up second and 15. Uh, officials take a little bit of time, make sure the ball gets set here. With the running clock, Wasion will take their time as we see some... Uh, Fresh coaches for Wasion signaling in some plays as well. Parson says everyone's set, gets the snap, under pressure again, trying to step up, and this one's going to be incomplete. Looking again for Rodriguez. It's going to bring up a third and 15. Wasion will break the huddle here. Taking their time down to 10 on the play clock. Third down snap coming. Parsons quickly fires. It's caught Sam Smith trying to create a little bit of space. He's got two defenders on him. And he's going to be taken down inside the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down and about eight. There is a flag coming at the end of the play here. This one is going to come back on Wasion. And it looks like Liberty will take the penalty and make the Indians replay third down. Parson still with that four receiver set. Wasian's had a back with the quarterback most of the night. Trying to leak out. Now he's an extra blocker. Parsons showing off that arm strength again. Lead everyone a little too much. Best uh, player for that one is a Liberty Center Tiger. As Cam Colley nearly had the interception as we take a look at the Charles River replay. Fourth and 23 coming up here for Wasion. Parsons, long way to go. He's going to 
Go for the sideline. That was going to be intercepted. As Zyder with it, and he's going to go down just across the 40 to seal this one for the Tigers. See the replay. Zyder able to high point this one, just takes it away from Sam Smith, and that's going to put the exclamation point on this one for Liberty Center. Minute 44 to go with a running clock. They'll just have to run a couple of plays here. They'll take over at their own 43. It's like new bodies coming in here for Liberty Center. Tigers will run the play clock all the way down as they are going to stay undefeated. Came in ranked in the first state poll inside the top 10 in what appears to be a loaded Division 5 as Miller will just take a knee back outside the 40-yard line. Have to do about one more as it looks like that will do it for Liberty Center. Second down 12. At least one more snap coming here for Liberty Center. So let this run all the way down. It's Grady Miller under center. Take the quick knee. Miller takes the second knee. And they'll get the play clock set inside of the game clock. So that should be the last snap of the night. Liberty Center will improve to 4 0, pick up a big win to kick off NWOAL play. Indians of Wauseon will fall to 2 and 2 and start 0 and 1 in league plays. The 100th meeting between the Tigers and the Indians goes to Liberty. They've won two in a row and they'll make it for the last five as the Tigers, with the five seconds ticking off, will get a big win as they've come to Wauseon and they've knocked off the Indians 40 to six. Finish tomorrow's athletic schedule for the Wauseon teams. JV football will be at Liberty Center. Varsity and JV volleyball will have a tri-match at Napoleon. We'll Hitler. take a break and when we come back, we'll be joined down on the field with our Miles Holiday with our dynamic due to the game. Rady Roberts, Miles Holiday with you here from Wauseon. Again, Liberty Center has come to town 40-6, to six, they got a win over the Indians. There are uh, few traditions unlike anything else. One of them is the Liberty Center football team. They'll start with the uh, singing of uh, the uh, fight song and the pride push-up. We'll, uh, we'll let Miles Holiday take things from there on the field. Well, Randy, uh, I, I'm coming over to the Coach Amstutz here. I'm sorry, what did you say, Coach? As soon as he's done, we'll get him? Okay. All right, Coach, uh, your special teams felt pretty good about your performance tonight. <laughs> does a great job with those guys. <laughs> yeah, Tom Russell does a good job with the kickers, but uh, when your game plan, it was evident, keeping the ball away from those three guys back deep. Uh, was that what you guys thought about doing, making it tougher for them to return it? Yeah, our, our uh, goal was to make them drive 60 yards versus break one for 90. So, yeah, I, this is a great job. So, yeah, I, I got to say that uh, probably got that one done, right? Put that one in the, in the check box. Yeah. yeah. How, how exciting is this to get a, a league opener, a big win like this to start the season in, in the NWAL? Uh, gets a team like this, very exciting. Uh, let's see if we can get our dynamic dude here in a second. Coach Amstead's going to help me corral him. <laughs> Nothing like live television, right, Miles? It's spectacular, my friend. So this is, uh, again, yeah, this is normally done during commercial break. We're trying to catch him real Amstutz quick is here. yelling his name. So oh, there. All right, okay. He's okay. going to come to – oh, look at that. He knows to come to you, Miles. All right, we got him. He's, he's good sportsmanship, spending some time with Jude Armstrong over here. All right, Zane, that camera right up there, buddy. Um, there you go. You are our dynamic dude of the game right there. Hold that up so everybody can see it. He's going to wear it next week, folks. Yeah. Uh, Zane Zider, our dynamic dude of the night. Uh, Zane, uh, two touchdowns running the football. He had a, a long pass for a touchdown as well, but – 
I thought early in the game it was your ability to convert third down and long that really extended this game early for you guys on drives and broke this thing open. How important was it to move your feet but yet come with a big throw? It was huge. I got to thank the line. You know, they all year they give me all the time in the world back there um, so I can set my feet, make a throw. Receivers got open. Uh, my teammates make my job pretty easy, so I have to thank them for that. Yeah, talk about your feet as well. You had that, that big counter run, quarterback counter, that you busted open right over here for about a 50-yard touchdown. There is nobody around you. Were you surprised how easily that broke open? Um, I don't know. I, it was just kind of a in-the-moment thing. Like I said, uh, line opens up holes for me. I just got to do my job and run. So, uh it wasn't, it wasn't really surprising. I just did it. So You're part of the defensive game plan as well. They had you bracketing along with Cruz on uh, Sam Smith. You had the deep responsibility. How important was it to get that matchup on Sam Smith? I mean, he's a playmaker. Um, he makes plays, obviously, a Division One athlete. So we, he was our biggest, biggest threat this week. Uh, we, we had to make sure that, um, you know, we had him. We had him. So. Well, this is definitely a statement win the NWOAL season uh, is it something that you guys are going to enjoy for a while or you got to get things going again because you got Archibald next week yeah Archibald's a great team uh, we'll probably enjoy it for about a night or two and then get back to work so All right, we'll enjoy it uh, tonight and tomorrow Zane Zider our WNH or <laughs> rather WOSN dynamic dude of the game thanks Zane Thank you. Randy uh, what a great combination of run the football and being able to throw it yeah glad you talked about what he's able to do on defense is that uh interception that he had kind of sealed it at the end there a couple of touchdown runs a great play on uh, defenses uh, again liberty center gets the win it's going to wrap up uh, our coverage don't forget tune over to uh, tv 44 at 10 o'clock they'll have uh, the sports report live with patrick Hamler get you all of the uh, scores and highlights from around the uh, northwest ohio for high school football tonight I want to thank everyone for making our night here in owasi on possible starts with ken reeker our Director Curtis Sam and Nick on the cameras. Of course, Matt Hutchinson, the great AD here at uh, Wasion, and uh, Kelly Getz working master control back at our WOSN studios in Lima. So our final again, 40-6, to Liberty Center with a big impressive win to kick off NWOAL play for the Wasion Indians for my partner Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching Live High School Football tonight on WOSN.